rise. The Supreme Court of Queensland is in session. Any person having business before the court, come forward, announce your presence, and you will be heard. Please be seated. Chief Justice, I present a commission appointing a judge of the Supreme Court. Let the commission be read. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, Queen of Australia and her other realms and territories, Head of the Commonwealth. To our trustee and well-beloved Kerry and Mellifont, Queen's Counsel, Bachelor of Laws, Barrister. Greeting. Whereas His Excellency the Governor in and over our state of Queensland in the Commonwealth of Australia, with the advice of the Executive Council of our said state, has seen fit to direct that you, Kerry Anne Mellifont, Queen's Counsel, being a barrister of the Supreme Court of our said state of at least five years standing, and one of our counsel learned in the law, shall be appointed a judge of the Supreme Court. Now know you that we, reposing full trust and confidence in your loyalty, learning, integrity and ability do hereby, in pursuance of the Constitution of Queensland 2001, in an exercise of all powers and authorities enabling us in that behalf, appoint you the said Kerry and Mellifont Queen's Council, being a barrister of the Supreme Court of such standing as aforesaid, to be a judge of the Supreme Court of our said state on and from the fourth day of October, 2021. To have, hold, exercise and enjoy the said office during good behaviour, together with all the rights, profits, powers, privileges and advantages thereunto belonging or appertaining. In testimony whereof we have caused the public seal of our said state to be hereunto affixed. Witness our trusty and well-beloved His Excellency, the Honourable Paul de Jersey, Companion of the Order of Australia, Commander of the Royal Victorian Order, Governor in and over the State of Queensland and its dependencies in the Commonwealth of Australia at Croydon, the second day of September in the year of our Lord, 2021, and in the 70th year of our reign. By command. Entered on record by me in the Register of Patents, number 52, page 62, the second day of September AD 2021, Clerk of the Executive Council. Justice Mellifon, I invite you to take the oaths of allegiance and office. I, Kerry Ann Mellifont, do sincerely promise and swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as lawful sovereign of Australia and to her heirs and successors according to law. And as a judge of the Supreme Court of Queensland, I will at all times and in all things do equal justice to all persons and discharge the duties and responsibilities of the office according to law, to the best of my knowledge and ability, without fear, favour or affection. So help me God.
Justice Melifont, we welcome you as the newest member of the Trial Division of the Supreme Court. Well, today we've got almost a full house of the members of the Supreme Court based in Brisbane. The exceptions are Justice Jackson, Justice Brown and Justice Applegarth, all of whom wish to be associated with these remarks. Justice Crow joins us from Rockhampton by video link. Uh, the two, the northern and far northern judges, Justice North and Justice Henry, are both on leave, but both also wish to be associated with these remarks. And I'm very pleased to welcome all of you today. I would not have thought I could become such an avid watcher of press conferences. It is a great relief. We've been fortunate to be able to hold this ceremony, albeit with numbers in this courtroom thinned, but with two overflow courtrooms. Uh, the locally based members of the High Court, the Chief Justice and Justices Keane and Edelman send their apologies. The High Court is presently sitting. I welcome Justices Greenwood and Thomas from the Federal Court. I should mention that Justices Logan and Rangier in particular ask that their apologies be recorded, re recorded. We welcome the Chief Judge by video link from Maroochydore and the just judges of the District Court who are physically present, uh, Judge Vaster of the Federal Circuit Court, Member McNamara of the Land Court, the Chief Magistrate and Deputy Chief Magistrate Get. Uh, some of our former members are present. Former Justices Cullinan and Carmody have particularly asked that their apologies be noted. At the bar table, I acknowledge the Attorney General, Ms Fentiman, Mr. O'Brien, on behalf of the Bar Association, Ms. Shearer, the President of the Queensland Law Society. In the audience, I welcome Mr. Krauss, MP, representing Mr. Nichols, the Shadow Attorney General, the Director General of the Justice Department, Mr. Mackey, and other departmental officers, members of the Academy, other distinguished guests, members of the profession, and members of the public. And, Your Honour, we particularly welcome your husband, Peter Russo, who is well known to many of us from his long practice as a solicitor. Your sons, Grant and Joe, your stepdaughter, Katie, uh, and your stepson, James, who I hope has succeeded in joining us by Zoom. Your two sisters and two brothers are here, a number of your in-laws, some cousins, and an enormous number of friends, both in pers person and by streaming. Justice Melifont, you started your legal career as a teenager in the Public Defender's Office. I won't be so indelicate as to say exactly when that was, but it was in the days when that office was still a separate agency before it had merged with legal aid. One of your guests today, and I suspect an early role model, is Barbara Newton, who occupied the position of public defender when you joined the office. She was one of the first women to occupy a senior position in the Queensland legal world. You saw both sides of the criminal law, spending roughly equal periods in public defence and at the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecution's office, before emerging like a butterfly to practise at the private bar in 2001. Your practice expanded to include administrative law, regulatory prosecution and defence work, often in the mining sector, inquests and the role of counsel assisting commissions of inquiry. The most recent of those from which you have had to tear yourself away in order to take this position was the Disability Royal Commission. While all that was happening in your professional life, you completed a Master of Laws at QUT, and then a Doctor of Juridical Science in 2007 at the same institution with your thesis on illegally obtained evidence published by the Federation Press. You took silk in 2010. But that short sketch of your career does little to convey a real idea of your position in the legal profession as contributor and mentor. You have always been extraordinarily generous with your time and energy on behalf of others, often to your own detriment. You've worked hard for the Bar Association, as I'm sure Mr O'Brien will attest. 
This appointment has spared you another year as co-chair of the Bar Association Conference Committee, but I suspect they'll dragoon you into service in some other capacity. You've been a regular organiser of social as well as educational events for the profession. The annual Women Judges and Women Barristers drinks, which you and now Justice Wilson organised in the Bar Common Room some years ago when it was the Bar's turn to put the function on, lives on in the memory of all who were present. <laughs> You'll now be able to organise the same event here in the courthouse on behalf of the judges. <laughs> but there is to be no property damage here. <laughs> you have been a strong supporter of QUT law students in many ways, tutoring Indigenous students, fundra fundraising for QUT's equity scholarship scheme. At a time when female le leaders of the bar were and are in short supply, you've always taken your leadership role very seriously mentoring and looking after young barristers. You've always had time for everyone and you've always had the ability to make that time highly enjoyable. Justice Melifont, your new colleagues are glad to have you join us with your talent, your capacity for hard work, your gift for camaraderie and your generosity of spirit. Madam Attorney General. May it please the court. Can I start by respectfully acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we gather this morning, the Turrbal and Yagara <coughs> peoples, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Can I acknowledge the Chief Justice and echo the acknowledgements made by Her Honour and extend my welcome to the judicial officers, representatives and members of the legal profession and the family and friends of the Honourable Justice Melifont. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Justice Kerry Melifont to the trial division of the Supreme Court. Your Honour brings to the court broad legal expertise gained throughout what can only be described as a truly distinguished career in the decades since your admission as a barrister. You are known amongst your peers as a fierce advocate, a compassionate listener, and part realist, part optimist, with Chambers colleagues often hearing the words there is no bad day that can't be made better by new shoes coming from your office. Your Honour was admitted to the bar in 1994 and was appointed senior counsel in 2010. You commenced at the private bar in 2001, having previously worked at the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions and the Public Defender's Office and Legal Aid Queensland. Since 2001, Your Honour has practised in civil, administrative, criminal and regulatory litigation appearing in both state and federal jurisdictions. In recognition of how highly respected Your Honour is amongst your peers, you were named the Women Legal Association of Queensland's Women Lawyer of the Year in 2017. In your practice, you have also represented clients in inquests, judicial reviews, professional disciplinary proceedings, workplace health and safety and environmental matters. In addition, Your Honour is also a qualified mediator with experience in alternative dispute resolution. Your Honour has been sought out for mentorship by junior counsel and solicitors alike, partly because of your ability to quickly identify the key issues in any matter and partially because of the fierce loyalty and protection you show for those on your team. In response, your colleagues have shown the same loyalty with your executive assistants often responding to the question What's her favourite flower with the response, vodka? <laughs> Beyond your work at the private bar, Your Honour has held senior roles with commissions of inquiry, most recently the Royal Commission into Violence, Abuse, Neglect and the Exploitation of People with a Disability. You were appointed senior counsel assisting the Royal Commission in September 2019 and have been involved in assisting a number of public hearings and have dedicated yourself to that work for the better part of the last few years. And this was acknowledged by the Chair of the Royal Commission, Ronald Sackville, AOQC, who publicly stated that although we will be sorry to see her go, I can think of no more fitting candidate for such an important role in our legal system. Your Honour brought to that role a wealth of legal expertise and experience with a particular focus on education and criminal justice issues as they affect people with a disability. This role will only enhance the court in your new role. 
Your Honour also played a valuable role helping Queensland recover from one of our most difficult natural disasters, having assisted the Queensland Floods Commission of Inquiry in 2011, and Your Honour also assisted the Ford Inquiry into child abuse in 1998-99. You hold a doctorate from the Queensland University of Technology in the topic of illegally and improperly obtained evidence. You are a published author, having written a book on that topic titled Fruit of the Poisonous Tree, Evidence Derived from Illegally or Improperly Obtained Evidence. And I note that Your Honour's work on this book was widely applauded at the time of its publication, with critics in the legal profession alike praising its readability, tight focus and important insights into its subject matter. You have also spent time during your career helping to educate the next generation of Queensland's legal practitioners, including First Nations students. Your Honour has served as a tutor and lecturer in criminal law at the Queensland University of Technology and often presented at legal profession courses and seminars. In addition, Your Honour has served as a member of the QUT Founders Scholarship Committee since 2013. The breadth of knowledge you have gained from handling high profile and complex matters in various jurisdictions throughout your career will make you an asset to the Supreme Court. Since the announcement of your appointment to the Supreme Court, I have continually been approached by members of the legal community informing me that Your Honour will be a wonderful addition to the court. Congratulations on your appointment today. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the trial division of the Supreme Court. May it please the court. Mr O'Brien. May it please the court. On behalf of the Bar Association of Queensland, it gives me great pleasure to speak at the occasion of the swearing-in ceremony of Your Honour, Justice Kerry Mellifont. Justice Mellifont, I extend a particular welcome to your husband, Peter, to your sons, Grant and Joe, and your stepdaughter, Katie, and your stepson, James, as well as other members of your family and friends who have been able to join us here today, either in person or virtually. Your Honour joins this court following a very successful career at the Bar. You were called to the bar in 1994, having been awarded Bachelor of Laws with honours from the Queensland University of Technology. You were subsequently awarded a Master's of Law in 1996, an award of a Doctor of Juridical Science in 2007. In 2001, you commenced your practice at the private bar following 11 years in public prosecutions, where you spent five and a half years with each of the Public Defender's Office, Legal Aid, and the Office of the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions. At the private bar, Your Honour managed a very busy practice where you excelled in areas of criminal and regulatory law, medical law, inquests, commissions of inquiry and administrative law. Your work in inquiries is of particular note. You had substantial roles in the Ford Inquiry into Child Abuse, the Queensland Floods Commission of Inquiry, the Barrett Adolescence Centre Commission of Inquiry, where I appeared alongside you, and most recently, the Royal Commission into Violence, Abuse, Neglect and Exploitation of People with Disability, where, as we heard, you were Senior Counsel assisting the Commission. In recognition of your prominence in these areas, you were made silk in 2010. You are known for your meticulous preparation and endless capacity for hard work. It is said you have never been to court anything less than completely prepared. And your deep sense of justice and, and fairness is clearly displayed in your work and is the hallmark of your approach to any matter. But despite such a heavy workload, Your Honour has always had time to help others in the profession, as the Chief Justice has noticed and noted. You have found joy in helping others at the bar and have been an enthusiastic mentor in many junior barris to many junior barristers, particularly women. You shared your successes with your juniors and gave much of yourself to them often becoming a confidant and a life coach. You have always showed your generous spirit to those around you who are safe with the knowledge that you're always available to give professional or personal advice or sharing good food and coffee or just a chat and a laugh. As the Chief Justice also noted, your honour has been a substantial contributor to our association. For the past three years, you have been the co-chair of the association's annual bar conference committee and you have presented countless CPDs seminars for so many years for the association. Importantly also, Your Honour has been a strong advocate for any effort to make life as a barrister better. 
be it through professional development or encouraging colleagues to look after themselves, both physically and mentally. On behalf of the Bar, we thank you for the significant contribution you have made to our profession. As much, of you, as much as you have aided those in the profession, it is perhaps the work your honour has done for those studying law which will have the greatest impact. For many years, your honour has been a member of the QT Law Founders Scholarship Committee, which is available for first-year law students who would be unable to commit to study without financial assistance. In any spare moment, and I've experienced this myself, you have always selflessly committed yourself to raising funds in support of this scholarship and supporting anyone who has a desire to make a career in the law. Whilst I'm aware that this is done without any desire for fuss or fanfare, I'm reliably informed that your involvement with this scholarship is quite rightly your honour's proudest achievement. Justice Melifont, to become a judge of this honourable court is to answer a call to public service. Your honour's extensive contribution to the profession and the community is such that it is no surprise that Your Honour answered that call when the opportunity arose. We know that Your Honour has accepted this appointment because Your Honour values public service and understands that the reputation of this great court can only be maintained if leading members of the bar, such as yourself and your fellow recent appointment, Justice Kelly, are prepared to take on the considerable burden of life as a Superior Court judge. For that sacrifice, for that commitment, the legal profession and the broader Queensland community are extremely grateful. Justice Melifont, the Bar has every confidence that Your Honour's intellectual ability and integrity, your sense of compassion and justice, your patience and calm demeanour will put Your Honour in good stead for a long and very successful career on the bench. The Bar extends to you and to your family their best wishes on this well-deserved appointment. May I please the Court. Ms. Shearer. May it please the Court. I am privileged to be here today on behalf of the Solicitors of Queensland to welcome Your Honour to your new role on the bench. It's a day for celebration when a leading and respected practitioner at the peak of their legal career, such as Your Honour, accepts a commission as a judge of this Court. This Court, at the apex of our justice system, is the place that Queenslanders turn to for the rational, consistent, and impartial application of the law to our most complex disputes. And the judges of this court are also charged on behalf of our community with imposing sanctions on those convicted of the most serious of offences. A judge of this court accepts a, life, a call to a life of service that requires the application of the power of the intellect, compassionate understanding of the human condition, and the ability to show both mercy and firmness when required, and most of all, the courage to do equal justice to all persons without fear, favour or affection. The fact that the life of a judge is one of courage and service is as intrinsic as it is often misunderstood. The judge's work in this high-profile court occurs quite properly in the full light of public scrutiny and attracts no shortage of commentary by observers both partial and impartial. The willingness to take on the role of a judge here speaks of a firm commitment to public service and courage to submit to the slings and arrows of the outraged from time to time. Justice Mellifont, your career provides ample evidence of commitment to public service and courage when called for, <coughs> as well as the personal qualities of perceptiveness, empathy and keen understanding of people, including their frailties. When you began your career at the Public Defender's Office as a 17-year-old, you quickly impressed your colleagues with your intellect and keen legal acumen. This was combined with your commitment to ensuring that the most vulnerable and least popular received the best legal representation. Despite your inability to attend at after-work drinks, as you were still a minor, you quickly became a valued member of the team. You showed interest and strong skills in advocacy and when you later commenced at the bar, you were immediately successful. This was due to your combination of intellect, good judgment and compassionate kindness, qualities that have been evident throughout your career. 
I'll not restate Your Honour's extensive qualifications other than to say your breadth of experience makes you ideally suited to the many types of serious proceedings heard in this court. Your extensive practice in criminal, civil, administrative and regulatory matters has undoubtedly prepared you well for your new role, as has your experience assisting so many royal commissions. Your Honour has always, as we have heard, fulfilled your role as a leader of the profession admirably, contributing generously over many years, holding positions of leadership and responsibility at the Queensland Bar. Members of our branch of the profession who have had the benefit of your friendship and leadership remark on your generosity in tutoring and mentoring the next generation of the profession. Others have noted your ability to juggle the many demands of life, to raise a family, contribute to the profession, complete a Masters of Laws, a Doctorate of Juridical Science and author a well-regarded book on evidence. Your Honour has also demonstrated courage. The practice of criminal defence has never been for the faint-hearted and until recently it had been a part of our profession where few women ventured. Your example has inspired other women to follow and you were recognised as Woman Lawyer of the Year by the Women Lawyers Association of Queensland in 2017. I've been told many stories of your courage as a young woman dealing with the wolf whistles at Bogger Road, on another occasion requiring vaccination for a contagious disease after holding a baby for a defendant in court, and on another occasion crawling through an underground coal mine in grossly oversized overalls. <laughs> You've always been willing to put personal discomfort aside to ensure justice was served. No doubt your service to this court will, require, will continue to demand that of you. The other qualities our members remark upon is your ability, amidst all the pressures of work, to bring a little bit of fun. The lolly bags and Freddo frogs dispensed in celebration of your taking silk are fondly remembered. While the opportunities for levity in this court may be fewer, your grounded and humane approach to the administration of justice will serve the people of Queensland well. The solicitor's branch of the profession welcomes your appointment to the court and you can be assured of our support. May it please the court. Justice Melifon. Mm. I've always really liked the well-beloved part of the Judicial Commission. I especially like it today when I get to be the well-beloved. I know I shouldn't, but I really do, because today is going so much better than the first time I went to court, which was an absolute train wreck. It really was. I was 22 and a freshly minted barrister, and the appearance was so bad, in fact, that by the time I got back to my cubicle at the Public Defender's Office, a barrister from the private bar was on the phone telling me that it would be okay he could only get better from here. <laughs> and he wasn't even in the court <laughs> or anywhere near it. In fact, I don't even know if he was in Brisbane. I have to say that the kindness of this barrister was the first of many such displays by counsel and solicitors and judicial officers over the years, for which I will always be grateful. Inevitably, giving thanks in a speech like this is fraught for the risk of leaving someone out. I've been truly truly lucky in my career and life to have had the help and guidance and role models from and in so many people. One instance which sits strongly in my memory was the determined effort of Justice Mullins and Justice Atkinson, as Her Honour then was, when they pulled me aside at a function quite determinedly when it had become clear to them that blamed myself as the entire reason a young woman was behind bars. And they, shall we say, uh, sorted me out. Uh, it's been a great privilege to work with the Honourable Rosalind Atkinson AO most recently in the um, Royal Commission. And I'm very pleased they're both here today. So too am I very grateful for the guidance and support of my masters, as they were then called, John Logan, my senior counsel, and Peter Davis, as their honours then were. They each helped me forge a practice and I learned very much from them. I also wish to mention the incredible generosity of Dr Jerry Cross in the first several years at the private bar. And I'm really, it's really lovely to see Mr Glenn of Queen's Council right in front of me today. He was also of great assistance to me. It is so lovely to be joined today by my well-beloved, my amazing family and friends and colleagues who all bring such love and joy to my life, each in their own way. I'm very grateful to them and everyone who has taken 
time out of their very busy schedules to take part in today's ceremony. Many are joining us remotely and several from states experiencing lockdown. I'm sure that everyone joins me in my deep hope that your lives can return to normal as soon as possible and in expressing profound gratitude to the healthcare and other frontline workers who are working tirelessly to help reach that light at the end of the tunnel. I do, however, want from those watching remotely full written confessions of those who are watching in their pajamas. <laughs> I want to thank the members of this court for their very warm welcome, for Justice Burns yesterday for taking time out of his public holiday to show me the ropes, for the senior judge administrator in making my transition smooth, ably assisted by Ms Lynn Klein, and for Ms Janine Mitchell in organising today, which is no mean feat. I suspect this job is one which fits within the wise green philosopher, philosopher's credo of do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> I am so pleased that I will be surrounded by many of these justices as I go about the task of doing. I'm looking forward to taking this journey with Justice Kelly and I offer him his, my warmest congratulations on his appointment. Justice Kelly does not know this, but many years ago, I thought I was to appear against him in the federal court and I asked a Chambers colleague, what's he like? That barrister had an involuntary sharp intake of breath and said with great solemnity, compelling. <laughs> this was not the response or answer that I wanted, nor was I thrilled to hear you deliver such a cracking a swearing in speech knowing I'd be the next to, to give the next speech, and my mood was not enhanced by a certain someone who shall remain nameless, <laughs> saying, good luck following that. <laughs> I am very humbled by the very kind and generous works, words of the Chief Justice, the Attorney General, Mr O'Brien and Ms Shearer. I note, however, that at the welcome ceremonies earlier this year of Justices Freeburn and Kelly, the speeches included praise for their quiet presence, their quiet lives, their <laughs> quiet integrity, etc. And I shall assume that the absence of that adjective today is only due to wanting to avoid repetition and for no other reason. Madam Attorney, I thank you for putting your faith in me to discharge the duties of this office. I have to say your telephone call came at just the right time. It was immediately after a very, very, very long lunch with my tremendous solicitors and junior, celebrating success after a very, very, very long running matter. And at which lunch we had decided on a career change, which was to start a band called Pollyanna and the Bennetts. I decided to go with your plan instead, which I think is a pretty good display of judicial discretion. May I also join in your acknowledgement of our First Nations people and do so in a very personal way by expressing my thanks for the th presence of three incredible women. Commissioner Andrea Mason, OAM, who is tuning in from Manbatwa country in the Northern Territory. Auntie Leslie Williams and Commissioner Tammy Williams, who today are celebrating an auspicious occasion themselves in Koa country. That these women have taken me into their lives has been an extraordinary privilege. Mr O'Brien, thank you for being here today. My thoughts are with Mr Sullivan and his family. The bar has been a profession I have been very proud to belong to. Of course, at times like this, it's easy to slip into romanticising because certainly at times I had to resist taking action against an opponent which would have ended up with me in the dock rather than in front of it representing someone else and no doubt others had the same experience when against me. But for a very large part, I was able to experience the best that the bar can offer. And that is a profession which is committed to the rule of law, to the advancement of justice and to excellence in representation. And that I was able to experience that is a product of those who had gone before and those around me demonstrating what collegiality and generosity are 
and should look like. We often use the word collegiate to describe the bar. As I've said, it's not always the reality, but, but when it is, it is truly something special. Because what it boils down to is caring for another human being. And nothing in this world is better than that. And nothing in this world is better than watching one of you juniors soar. And I can see some of them here today. And I think that's why I've always loved the part in ceremonies where the bar stands up as one behind and with the president. It's hard to describe the feeling, but it is special. And I suspect it's a combination of pride and hope. Although I'm very much looking forward to this new chapter of my life, which will start in an hour or so, there is certainly part of me which will miss what it means to be a member of the bar. At Justice Kelly's swearing in, my appointment had been announced, but I had not yet started, obviously, <laughs> otherwise we would not all be here today. And so I was neither barrister or, nor judge, and I was seated over you know, on the right-hand side of the court. And when the bar rose, some involuntary muscle memory in my feet sent a message to me to stand up. But fortunately, my brain sent a response back just in time, saying, stop, what do you think you're doing? And uh, that's just as well, because you can imagine how really silly I would have looked standing over there, not in robes, everybody else sitting down, and the Attorney General thinking, oh my, what have I done? <laughs> Ms Shearer, I share such great admiration and affection for the members of your branch of the profession that I married one. <laughs> what our professions share is the absolute privilege of being part of the lives of others, to live and learn about so many aspects that this world has to offer through our clients' lives, to walk with our clients as they are going through what for many will be the most stressful experience they will encounter. I have had the opportunity to work with some exceptional solicitors and my, I may not have always said it, but I understood always the weight on the solicitor of recommending a barrister to their client. I am sincerely thankful for your members having put their trust in me, particularly in areas where I was not already established. I am lucky to say that many have become firm friends and I can see some of them there today and to them, I promise to be more Amy than Rosa, but with a good splash of Gina for outside court. <laughs> Ms Shearer, one of the most, if not the most exceptional person I have known is Catherine Birchall, who you will know was a solicitor for many years and contributed to your society. I want to say that if I, if I can be even half the lawyer, friend, mother, wife and leader that she was, I'll be more, more than entitled to be proud of myself. I started my legal career in my brother's firm. I was a filing clerk. I then received a job at the Public Defender's Office, which we'll come to in a moment. Suffice to say, I was the worst filing clerk in the history of the legal profession. And I'm quite sure <laughs> that my brother and his lovely partner wished me very well as I went off to prisons and such like, rather than trying to keep any kind of administrative order in their office. I, I started at the Public Defender's Office when I was 17, and I came to be there because when I went to see my Grade 12 Careers Counselor, John Telfer at Mount Maria, about where to do work experience, I told him I wanted to be a general practitioner, and he said, okay, I'm gonna send you to the Public Defender's Office. And so I went. And then Terry Kelly at the Public Defender's Office told me to come back at the end of the year and they would give me a job. And so I did. This said two things. These two good men saw something in me that I didn't and that I am easily led. <laughs> and what I learned at the Public Defender's Office, apart from how to still get your work done with cricket balls flying about the cubicles, was in the right to a full and proper defence and in the privilege in providing one. As the Chief Justice has mentioned, the public defender then was Mrs Barbara Newton, who is present here today with her daughter. Mrs Newton was known as the fiery redhead, but the fire was passion and strongly held belief in that very right, 
and her leadership and determination that every public defence client would be properly represented was a credit to her and the office and an absolute inspiration to me. It was at the public defender's office that I first met my husband, Peter Russo, who had a law firm at that time in New Farm. It was many, many years after that we became a couple and many, many years after that that we married. I feel that my marriage vows ought to have been to love, honour and never question the pursuit of good pasta. <laughs> Our marriage has had the added bonus of Jimmy and Katie, who I hold dearly in my heart, and a swathe of in-laws, many of whom are here today, who have made me welcome always and I'm fortunate to have them in my life. I'm very proud of Peter. His strong commitment to the marginalised and to decency and to humanity was something which struck me from the first. And these are qualities I already see in our two beautiful sons, Grant and Joe. I'm also very proud that Peter briefed women and briefed women with the good work long, long before equitable briefing policies were even in contemplation. Peter, ours has been an adventure and life with you is frequently amusing. There was that time that a summons needed to be served on a witness who was known to enjoy a beer. So Peter decided the best way to do that was for him and his two solicitors, Mrs Arminas and Thomas, to start at the closest pub and work their way north. <laughs> they were successful, eventually. Or the time that a subpoena was to be served on one of the islands in the bay, and apparently the best way to do that was to hire a fishing boat. I can only assume there was a terrible shortage of process services, services at the, servers at that time. And the last I will tell of, of our interesting life is Peter heading off for a straightforward arrest in a country town west of Brisbane of four Italian farmers whose crop may or may not have extended beyond oranges. <laughs> Three days later, I got a phone call from New South Wales. And I know, I know this to be true, that Peter knew that if he got them back to the farm at around lunchtime, there'd be an Italian cook there for sure with piles and piles of spaghetti pomodoro and more to share. Like I said, never question the pursuit of good pasta. In his new job, he is much easier to keep track of. To my boys, Grant and Joe, some people say that your heart swells whenever you see your kids. And for me, that is absolutely true whenever I see or whenever I think of you. And so that is why whenever you are within kissing or hugging distance, you get smothered. You are soon getting to the size where you'll be able to fend me off, but for the time being, if you're within grabbing the distance, too bad. And I reserve the right to rickroll you to my heart's content. <laughs> my mum and dad, uh, Rosemary and Brian, would have been so very proud today. My mum would be sending me beams of love with her big warm eyes and my dad would be busy taking credit. I mean, <laughs> I mean all the credit. <laughs> Truly, my role would have been inconsequential. And I would have been okay for that. I could not have hoped for better parents. And I'm so very touched that Tommy O'Neill, a part of the family, the Mellifont family, just about from the moment he and his wife Mary hit Australian shores from Scotland, is here with me today with his daughter Mary. My parents also very conveniently produced for me four most excellent siblings, Gregory, Michelle, Belinda and Daniel, who I not only love dearly, but I also really like. The same can be said for all the additions they have brought into our family, wonderful in-laws and nephews and nieces, and even the most recent addition, a horse dog named Dougie. <laughs> a resounding happy birthday to Belinda for last week for a very special birthday. My sister is 10 years older than me and I really don't like it at all. And this happens commonly when people ask who is older. <laughs> I'm really excited you could all be with me today. So too my cousins, Bernie, Lisa and Pam, who are such an integral part of the Malifont Russo village. In life, I've had the honor of having wonderful friendships something which I hold very, very dear. If I could acknowledge you all, the tea will go cold. May I indulge in a quick view. To my Janella, we have come a long way since dancing in tutus in the school church. And to Vicky and Jane, exceptional lawyers and exceptional friends, I'm very lucky. At the welcome ceremony for Justice Elizabeth Wilson, her honour referred in an anonymous way to the importance of having a true friend 
one who would look you in the eye and say, Liz, you really need to get a haircut. <laughs> Out of pure retribution, I shall refer to a friend of mine in an anonymous way who, out of pure self-entertainment, brought hula hoops to the Martyr Maternity Ward to visit me the day after I had Joe. That day, it was not her hair that was causing her to receive strange looks. I think it's very sensible that the Chief Justice has separated us on level 16. There are many people on, people on this bench and those who are retired who I regard as friends and mentors, and I'm thankful to each of you. I have mentioned some already. I also note my deepest admiration and affection for the Honourable Murdo AC and the Honourable Anne Lyons. Our Chief Justice is allergic to public statements about her of gratitude, affection or admiration. So for fear of getting listed in applications for 28 weeks straight, these comments have been heavily modified. In my humble opinion, our Chief Justice is a pretty good stick and I'm more than lucky that our paths have crossed from time to time. I also want to thank Joe Formosa, Wes and Kerry Clark and Mark Kelly for their commitment to making the world a better place despite the challenges of a certain recalcitrant customer and to the chant shows for including us in their family and for doing the unheard of and taking time off from their restaurant to be here today. In my career, I've been so very, very lucky to have been supported by the most excellent executive assistants, including Fiona Bowman, Annette Persky, Lizzie Kenny and Lisa Peters and Lisa and Lizzie are here today. To say that I need someone to keep me functioning on a day-to-day -day basis is somewhat of an understatement. I start this job leaving another one unfinished, and that is my work on the Disability Royal Commission. I wish all of those on the Commission the very best in achieving the fundamental objectives of it, which is to improve the lives of people with disability in Australia and to make Australia a more inclusive society. It is complex and, in, and intense work, but work which is incredibly important and work which will be accomplished with collective wisdom for the whole, of course, is always greater than the sum of its parts. Go well and keep tipping on the tightrope. And finally, a message to my boys. I'm very proud of both of you. Sometimes life is hard, sometimes life is scary, sometimes it feels overwhelming, but you are awesome human beings. You both have such heart and courage and strength that even if it doesn't always feel like it, you can do anything. And you will always be loved more than you can imagine, even when we're fighting about screen time. <laughs> Thank you. Now there is morning tea for those of you who can stay and you're all very welcome to join us out in the precincts of the court. Let the proceedings be recorded. Adjourn the court. All rise. The court is adjourned.